Welcome back to Good Morning Antigua, Barbara. We thank you so much for staying with us on this Tuesday, the 11th day of November 2014. I am Phil George. Joining me this morning are, are two beautiful ladies, and they're here for an important undertaking in Antigua. And uh, they are from the Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition. And this morning we have Dawn Hazel Gills, Monitoring and Evaluation Officer. CVC, that's Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition, and Monica Brown, who is the project coordinator. Good morning to you both, and thanks for joining us this Good morning. morning. Thanks for having us. The Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition, some people, it may be the first time that they're hearing of, of such an organization. Before we get into what you're really here for, let's talk a minute about the Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition. What is it? Well, the Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition, it's a coalition, of course. We have about 90 members. We're located in Jamaica, and it was founded in 2004 by the late Dr. Robert Carr that um, brought persons and groups together. The main thing that we do is to fight HIV and AIDS, but we represent vulnerable population. So persons that are marginalized by society based on structural forces and we advocate for and on their behalf and empower them. You, you mentioned vulnerable populations. Uh, what specifically, Don? Uh, uh, what groups are we talking about? Okay, vulnerable population, we look at people that are affected and those also infected by various um, things in society, for example, HIV and AIDS. We look at marginalized youth. We also look at um, people that are disadvantaged in one way or another, people that are having problems in accessing care, HIV care, and other young people that need our assistance in terms of getting access to area specific to HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to be clear, the, 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 the CVC, uh, you, you target, it, it's all inclusive, isn't it? But you target mostly young people, am I no, correct? No, we no. We work with um, all, men all who have eight. sex with men, sex workers, um, prisoners and ex-prisoners, and marginalized youth as well. So um, if you want to make a All general statement, it's about of, marginalized persons and populations that are vulnerable. All yeah, all ages that are vulnerable to HIV. So the groups would be sex workers, men who have sex with men, marginalized youth, migrants, um, prisoners and ex-prisoners, and drug users. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd say about six specific groups that are vulnerable to HIV. How has this progressed over the years, the CVC, since it was, uh, it, it was formed? Have you seen that it has become that more important in society? It has become that more important for many reasons. Um, as it relates to the region, um, the Sub-Saharan region is, has the second highest rate of HIV in the region. And um, normally in most of our islands, there are what are called generalized populations. So there's a HIV statistics for each country globally. For example, Jamaica is 1.7. But outside of those global figures, you would have um, sub-populations that have higher figures. And CVC works with those vulnerable populations because most times the governments fund the, 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 the general population. So we are able to reach, as an NGO, we are able to reach those vulnerable populations that are not funded, projects and programs that are not funded by the government because they did not receive funding for that and they cannot reach those populations. So our work is very important in targeting and being targeted to those populations in decreasing those rates. And we have um, examples of decreased rates. And we also work with the national AIDS program. So although the government does not fund and work with the vulnerable population, we partner with AIDS program or in the case of Antigua, the AIDS secretariat 
for implementation of projects. So it is a partnership because we are aware of the drivers and the structural drivers, which are legislative and policy related. So if you don't work in that way, then you won't achieve your objectives and aims. So we're not by ourselves working to reduce HIV. We're working with the government in the different countries that we work. You mentioned in passing, though, um, legisl legislation. Do you think that um, th there is enough le uh, legislation in place to deal with these vulnerable groups? Um, you mentioned that uh, lots of times that the government uh, do not necessarily deal with it directly, and hence the funding uh, from For various organizations, uh, they are funded. But do you think, uh, from, where, from your point of view, right. do you think that, that, that more needs to be done, or that the government uh, needs to make that extra effort? Well, I think it's two different conversations, uh, because you, you know, most of our government, we talk about fiscal space. So financially speaking, maybe there is no more that can be done financially speaking. But your first question was about legislation. And of course, there are barriers with the existing legislation as it relates to countries in the region and those population we speak about. When a commonality, for example, with sex workers in countries in the region, it is either um, illegal, illegal or there are subcomponents of the work they do that um, you know, it's, it's, it's illegal. So there are those barriers. Um, when we get to, let's say, men who have sex with men, um, they're part of a larger um, community that, there's ju that is just illegal. There's, there's no, you know, there's no permitting or accommodating, frame, enabling environment for them to participate in society. And so we're talking about access, we're talking about treatment and care. Mm -hmm. So um, what we have done as CVC, though, is approach it from a human rights perspective. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying these vulnerable population are special because they are. We're saying as a human being and from a human rights perspective, more needs to be done to en ensure that they have access and that an enabling environment is created for them to participate in society. So they need to be able to go to the clinic just as another person that needs access to healthcare. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we try to work towards, to reduce stigma and discrimination, to, to deal with things at a policy level, to make a difference and make things easier for, as it relates to access for these vulnerable yes. populations. So simply put, you, you, you're creating that avenue right. uh, for these vulnerable uh, individuals and groups who may otherwise find it difficult. Exactly, exactly. Yes. But our aim is to have them, you know, accessing mm -hmm. the services that exist for citizens through those channels. Yes. That's what we try to work towards. Okay. I'm going to bring in Dawn here um, mm -hmm. because uh, you are here on a special mission. Right. Um, and, and that is uh, to, to sign contracts uh, uh, with three groups uh, in particular. Right. Uh, so, uh, Dawn, let's talk about your, your mission in Antigua. Okay. I am here in the capacity of monitoring and evaluation officer along with Monica is the coordinator and we are at the implementation stage of the projects here in Antigua and we, ha we have three um, organizations who will be receiving grants from us and um, my role in this process is to do monitoring of these projects mm -hmm. and my role um, will take the form of explaining and training the grantees and their staff in basically what is expected of them in order for them to be able to report. So I, along with the coordinator, we go through a very basic monitoring and evaluation training with them um, in an effort to educate them in that field. Also we present them with the relevant reporting tools that mm -hmm. are needed in order for us in order for them to be able to report based on what is being done according to their m and &E plans um, well, as i mentioned m and &E plans they all had to submit monitoring and evaluation plans mm -hmm. as part of the um, 
process and as such I review them and in country now we go over it with them to make sure they have a clear understanding of what is and what is to be and basically so far we have had good meetings here in Antigua and the process does not only stop here it continues throughout the lifetime of the project. I am based in Jamaica and we will not be in country as often as we would like, but we would liaise with each grantee here and at times make monitoring trips to make sure that everything is going smoothly because we, on our part, we need to report to the donor and funder, which is Mark Aids. That was going to be my next question because I noticed you were being, being very meticulous. <laughs> and it prompted the question, do this country risk losing uh, out on funding if things go awry? I will let Monica answer. Mm -hmm. Monica? Uh, the, uh, the, the funding conversation is a little more complex than that. It's not just about things go awry, you do not get funding. Your country classification has something to do with your mm -hmm. funding. So if you're upper middle income, funding is already decreasing. Mm -hmm. So the funding conversation is a little more complex than that. What I would say though is that um, it is in everyone's best interest to implement properly, to monitor properly. So you can, at the end of the day, whether there's future funding or not, you yes. would have implemented a good project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, you know, that's a better, but in general, funding is being reduced to the region because of the country classification where upper middle income, you know, a recession just took place, so development funds are less. So the, but the, the funding conversation is quite complex. Yes. yes. How many countries, Dawn, have you, you visited before arriving in Antigua? On this round of funding, Antigua has been our first stop. Yeah. From here, we go over to St. Lucia. Okay. Right. I, I want to talk, though, about the, the, the funding. It says that the, the three organizations will each receive funding maximum of 20,000 US dollars exactly. to implement projects that serve populations vulnerable to, to HIV. Let's talk about the three, er, the, the three groups right. um, that you're here to deal with specifically that you will be signing contracts with. Well, ARC, the Antigua Re Resilience Collective Incorporation, they are going to be working with the female Spanish speaking sex workers. So they're going to be doing a peer education program. Mm -hmm. um, they are a marginalized, also a transient group. So they will reach them with um, education and um, supplies as it relates to their work. Um, you could ask the question I said earlier, sex work is illegal. But there are structure, but at the same time, we're working with as it relates to HIV. Yes. So despite legal or illegal, in reducing the rates, yes. you have to work with the persons that are most vulnerable to the disease and the, the, the sex workers, and in particular in ARC's case, the female Spanish sex workers are one of the populations that are vulnerable to HIV. So it is the potential hazard. Right, uh, it's the, it, the it, health it, of, it, so it, it's yes. about prevention. Yes, it you is. Know, it's the health. And, and I mean, the reality is that this exists mm -hmm. and it does happen. And it's, you know, so it's, it's a preventative measure and a, yeah. you know, so. Uh, so the, the other two are women vulnerable to gender-based violence and yeah. marginalized youth. Right. right. So it's um, Women Against Rape. It's also an Antiguan organization that is going to be working with women that are vulnerable to gender-based violence and they will be also providing a lot of sensitization and empowerment for women a component of what is proposed in their project should see some kind of um, funding to women for what is it economic um, activities mm -hmm. because some of the times the 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 as we talk about structural drivers it's the fact that a woman might not have what she needs or what she thinks can empower her to be leaving, you know, an abusive relationship. So we're trying to um, deal with things at the root to see if we can make the changes at a higher level. Uh, and, and then we have the, the marginalized youth. Yeah. Uh, who are those individuals? So the Caribbean Family Planning Affiliation is working with marginalized youth. Marginalized youth, different 
jurisdictions have different definitions. But it's mostly, again, youth that maybe they didn't finish school, they're out of school, they have their orphans, they have no parents. So it's mostly youth that are not in societal, structural environments. So the marginalized is that they're not in the structure of having a household that they have a parent or they're not in the educational structure. Those are examples of marginalized youth. And so it is about providing a safe space for those youth to come to because as a marginalized youth, some of the things that can happen is that they can become um, targets for other persons to take them into more yes. dangerous areas. Mm -hmm. So it's about providing a safe space and teaching them about HIV AIDS and other things, yes. not just that, because for a youth, there's more to life than that. Mm -hmm. And so trying to get them on a path that could, you know, eventually get them to be a participating member of society. So we're looking at a possibility of approximately, uh, approximately 60,000 US dollars uh, po possibly. Possibly, yes. Possibly. It can be less. Can it, it? It, it will be less it will because be less. The, 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 the contracts have already been agreed, but it, will, it won't be a lot less. It's no. about 55,000 right. US dollars. Not very Among very the three. Different. Right. So yes. it's not very yes. different because the call was for maximum 20,000. Yes. So based on the submissions, those were approved. But I want to hear from you, both, both Don and, and Monica what the reaction is, because you hold key positions in this organization. And I know when you dialogue with, 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 with the individuals, for example, the AIDS Secretariat, um, Women Against Rape, and, um, and also the, the other organization, um, you must see, you must hear the reaction and, and, and see the look on their, their faces. What has been the reaction from them that they, they, they're receiving this funding that is going to help, really help in, in promoting what, what they're promoting? Okay, I must say the reaction is one that mixed reactions, but all positive reactions. Yes. They yes. show much appreciation mm. to this funding coming in. Um, as you know, in, as you may know, in times past, um, HIV was the virus or disease that attracted a lot of international funding and money. And a lot of money was pumped into HIV, but in recent times, it has been reduced yes. to a certain extent with the rise of other um, diseases or plagues like cancer. Yes. So um, as with any other um, organization that is in the fight to mitigate the impact on HIV in not only this country but in the Caribbean, there is a lot of appreciation for monies no matter how slim it may look. Mm -hmm. And so um, we it, 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 are going to meet later with one more of the grantees okay. and yeah. we expect, even based on communication before we came in dialogue with them concerning the grants, they were excited, I must say. They were inquired, they were, they were awaiting the award, and then they are looking forward to working and making this work as much as possible because this also steps, um, provides the stepping stone for them to um, try to acquire other funds through other means. and. Um, as I said to them, and as I will say to them, as we go from country to country, um, no matter how small it will look compared to um, um, probably grants they have received or grants that exist, um, they have to um, do their best because it, may as, it might as well be the stepping stone for them to acquire other grants based on their performance. Yes in this round yes. of funding. And probably a higher amount too. Yes. Yes. Don, what, what, what is your, um, what's the reaction you have been seeing mm -hmm. while dialoguing with these individuals? Well, for, um, from, from a, what you'd say, a Sorry, national, uh, Monica. Monica, that's fine. <laughs> We are together, so yeah. yes. From a national perspective, um, you want to know that the AIDS Secretariat, for example, or in other countries, the National AIDS Program, you, you know, you will be received and that there's a partnership that you can envision taking place. Mm -hmm. And we were well received by the AIDS Secretariat. And uh, we had a conversation about what are the gaps 
and conversation about what it is that we're doing. And we already are at a level of understanding of what needs to be done, how things are going to work, and the fact that us coming here is actually filling a gap that is being discussed by the aid secretary. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, we are already seeing the benefit of being present and the partnership that will continue. The funding, is it a one-time funding or is it an annual, uh, an annual funding or is it a case where um, it is being given in tranches? The dynamics of how this funding works and how CVC itself operates, because CVC is not a funding agency. CVC is an NGO in and of itself okay. that the applies, right? That applies for funding based on, on internal of, expertise, yes. okay. and based on the funding we receive, we do what is called subgranting. So we um, we applied to MacAids. They have provided some funding for us for the purpose of subgranting. We are in existing countries with different funding and we wanted to expand to other countries, hence the MacAIDS funding. So we can make no commitments if there will be future funding or if it, not from MacAIDS and not from elsewhere. What we can commit to is the fact that we understand the importance of working in the area of HIV AIDS and we'll continue internally at CVC to seek funding to do the work that is necessary to be done. But for this, as it relates to a tranche conversation, it would be the, the only tranche that exists is a portion of what the full figure they get will be given and then another portion at another time. But this, okay. as it relates to MacAIDS and the conversation, we can only say we are here with what we have now. We can't speak to the future. So CVC is just the go-to person. Uh, you get to the, the top uh, officials with the money in their hands mm -hmm. and you 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 lobby on behalf of these uh, other organizations mm -hmm. correct? right 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 because we're we're a coalition yes. but we must say and have the conversation that the funding that we have accessed like the MacAIDS funds yes. it's an open call that anyone could have applied to mm. and gotten for themselves. Mm. So we, 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 we see the, we, but we're more than, we, we're not a funding agency. What we are, we provide capacity building mm. for our, and technical assistance for our coalition members or for NGOs in general. And part of that, includes funding but we're not a funding agency so that needs to be emphasized yes. it so happened that we're here with this funding and we're subgranting but do you think though uh, uh, any one of you can answer the question do you think that for example these organizations uh, the um, the women vulnerable to gender based violence and so on do you think it's a case where they cannot see uh, uh, that far and, and see that okay that organization is offering this funding and 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 so we can probably apply to them directly is it a case of, of they, 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 they just don't know how to get to these individuals and so you uh, your organization or organization like yours are the ideal uh, middle persons so to speak uh, well what happens is that most NGOs are stretched thin. So you will have the project coordinator who is also the accountant, who is, well, not the accountant, most times they have an accountant, mm -hmm. but they're doing a lot of work. So when a call comes out, you think you will apply, but you don't have the time. Some of the, 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 the forms are intimidating for small NGOs. So there, right. there are a number of reasons right. that one might not apply. And I think in acknowledging that we are, because we know the work needs to be yes. done, we, but we would say at this time that persons should apply if they see a call comes out. Mm -hmm. It's not, we don't see it as competing mm -hmm. because an organization does not change because of a funding. Mm -hmm. You have your mission and you have your mandate. So if the call comes out and it's applicable to your mission or your mandate, you should apply. Mm -hmm. It's just that there are challenges in capacity sometimes yes. to write a good proposal or there are challenges in time. And we are aware and acknowledge all of this mm -hmm. and we do this because we are, I mean, and we have the same challenge. Eh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are working at it at a certain point, you know, at midnight or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just to know, well, I guess it's a statement of empowerment to say anyone can apply. Mm -hmm. 
and anyone can get as mm -hmm. long as it fits into the requirement of the call that right. is old. While you may be diplomatic about it, I think I can, it, it's safe for me to say you, your group has more experience in the know-how uh, how to deal with this and probably access the funding. Uh, we're just about uh, ready to, to, to end, but I just want to give you a minute or so to talk about McAid, uh, McAid's, uh, the McAid's fund. Right. Because this is where the money is coming this, from. Yes, this, this, this particular funding is coming from McAid. And McAid is the, the, the makeup, the MAC makeup. They have a foundation. It was started in 1994. And what they do is 100% of the sale of the Viva Glam lip gloss and lipstick goes towards this fund and then this fund is available for um, targeting HIV and AIDS um, out, um, interventions. Um, so that, that's, what, that's what the Mac AIDS Fund is, okay. is about. So the, the Mac is just what, she, what it what, is? That's the what Mac. exactly what it is. It's makeup. the Mac makeup that has a fund for HIV and AIDS. Right. And uh, just to, to, to remind you that um, uh, both Dawn and um, Monica are here. They are here to g give money. Uh, to, towards a worthy cause. And so three organizations will benefit um, th that are vulnerable to HIV, the female Spanish sex workers, uh, women, women vulnerable to gender-based violence, and marginalized youth. And there is an umbrella organization that they fall under, each one of them, the AIDS Secretariat. Um, there are two other organizations, WAR, um, yeah, we, women against um, women, rape. women against rape, and the um, the Antigua Resilience Collective yeah. um, will be working with the sex workers. Women against rape will be working with the vulnerable, vulnerable women. women, and the Caribbean Family Planning yes. um, Affiliation will be working with marginalized youth. Yes, and um, CVC as an umbrella organization. Um, it's a membership organization, and so we are always looking for members to join the organization, and they can find the information on our website for membership. Yes. So there you have it from Monica and Dawn. They are representatives of the Caribbean Vulnerable um, Communities Coalition, and they are here to distribute the funding that will go towards a, a worthy cause and that funding is from the MacAid uh, fund. Uh, they're here to sign the contracts and uh, the funding can be a maximum of 20,000 US dollars and it's to serve populations vulnerable uh, to HIV. Don Hazel Gills, Monitoring and Evaluation Officer, and Monica Brown, Project Coordinator, Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition. I want to thank you both for coming in and, and shedding such important light and, 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 and bringing the purses also to Antigua um, for these groups that really do need it. Yeah. Thanks for so, having uh, us. And it's not just the purse. The partnership is also important because these existing organizations have expertise that can be shared and best practices yes, yes. that are also useful to other organizations in the sector and in the region. Well, thank you very much again for thank coming you. in. Thanks for having me. Uh, Monica Brown and Don Hazel Gills. This is Good Morning Antigua Barbuda Tuesday edition. We'll be right back.